Today we're going to look at a nice, what I think is very aesthetically looking question. And that is, well, what rational angles can we plug into the cosine function and achieve a rational number? So this is much different than the question of when is cosine rational? Because that actually happens many, many, many more times. Think about, for instance, a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. You would have the cosine of that angle equals 3 over 5 or 4 over 5, depending on how you orient the triangle. But I bet you can't think of any standard numbers or values that you would plug into a trig function, maybe from a trig chart, to achieve that cosine of theta equals 3 over 5. And that's because, well, such an angle, in fact, as we'll see, must be irrational in terms of degrees. And in fact, this question only has a couple of different answers. Okay, so anyway, along the path of answering this question, we're going to be really helped out with the following lemma. And that's this lemma for decomposing cosine of n theta into maybe smaller parts, if you will. And what it says is for all n bigger than or equal to 2, the cosine of n theta is in fact equal to the cosine of n minus 1 theta times the cosine of theta times 2, I almost forgot that, minus the cosine of n minus 2 theta. Okay, so now let's jump into the proof of this. So let's start with this left-hand side. So we have the cosine of n times theta. I'm going to start by writing that as the cosine of n minus 1 times theta plus theta. So we're just decomposing n as n minus 1 plus 1. And then from here what we'll do is use the angle sum formula for cosine. That allows us to write this as the cosine of n minus 1 theta times the cosine of theta minus the sine of n minus 1 theta times the sine of theta. Like I said, that's just the angle sum formula. Now observe that this first term here is, well, it's the first term that we have here, but it's attached to a 1 instead of a 2. So that means there's maybe a little bit more work to do. And the work involved will be to take this sine n minus 1 times theta and then decompose that using an angle sum formula as well. And so we do that by taking this n minus 1 times theta and viewing it as n minus 1 times theta, sorry, n minus 2 times theta plus theta. And then, like I said, using the angle sum formula for the sine function. So let's see. Bringing stuff down, we have the cosine of n minus 1 times theta times the cosine of theta. That's just, like I said, bringing that down. And then after that, we're going to have minus a bunch of stuff from that decomposition using the angle sum formula for the sine function. In fact, it'll be something like this. So we'll have the sine of n minus 2 times theta times the cosine of theta plus the sine of theta times the cosine of n minus 2 times theta. And then observe that all of that is being multiplied into the sine of theta, just bringing that down. Okay, so now what should we do from here? Well, perhaps let's expand this out a little bit. So we have the cos of n minus 1 times theta times the cosine of theta. That's our first term. And then we have minus the sine of n minus 2 times theta times the cosine of theta times the sine of theta. And then after that, we're going to have a minus cosine of n minus 2 times theta times sine squared. We get a sine here and a sine here. That gives us a sine squared. But I'm going to write that as 1 minus cosine squared. Okay, good. But where could we go from there? Well, from here, in fact, what we're going to do is I'm going to take this cosine theta sine theta, and then I'm going to reverse the order to sine theta cosine theta. And then, well, we're essentially going to apply an angle sum formula for the cosine function in reverse 
on this term that I've underlined in yellow. That's going to allow us to write this as the cosine of n minus 2 times theta times the cosine of theta minus, let's see, it's going to be the cosine of n minus 1 times theta. So like I said, that's really just the angle sum formula for cosine applied to cosine n minus 1 theta, just rewritten a little bit. So now let's maybe put parentheses around this because observe that that's attached to a minus sign. So if we bring the minus sign through, you know, some signs will change. In fact, let's expand the whole thing out now. So we'll have a cosine n minus 1 theta times a cosine of theta. And then let's see, we have minus a negative cos n minus 1 theta times cosine of theta. So that's going to be plus a cos n minus 1 of theta times the cosine of theta. And then we'll have minus cosine of n minus 2 theta times cosine times cosine. In other words, cosine squared. So in other words, we have minus cos n minus 2 theta times cos squared of theta. And that's all from this first term and this second term. And then also we get some stuff from multiplying this through. So for instance, we get minus cos n minus 2 theta and then a plus cos n minus 2 times theta times the cosine of squared of theta. Again, that's from multiplying everything through. But now let's observe that this cos n minus 2 times cosine squared cancels its companion there. And then these two terms double up. So they double up to 2 cos n minus 1 theta cos theta. And then minus, we have a cos n minus 2 theta that we bring down. But, you know, starting here and ending here is exactly the formula that we wanted to build over here. Okay, so let's see how we can use this. So we just got finished proving this lemma, and now we're ready to do really our final calculation. So let's set theta equal to, let's see, 2m over n times pi in radians. But let's notice that any time you have a rational number of degrees, you can write it in terms of a rational number times pi radians. That's simply because pi radians is the same thing as 180 degrees. So pi radians is an integer number of degrees. So anyway, the fact that we've got a rational number of degrees over here means we can write our rational number of degrees as follows. And now let's observe that the cosine of 2 times m times pi is equal to 1 because cosine is 2 pi periodic. But then that's also equal to the cosine of n times theta based off of the way that we defined theta. And now the idea is to use this decomposition rule over and over and over again. So after our first step, we have the cos of n minus 1 theta times the cosine of theta, all times 2, and then minus the cosine of n minus 2 theta. Okay. And now, well, we're going to apply our rule again to this cosine of n minus 1 theta and this cosine of n minus 2 theta. So let's see, that's going to end up giving us something like this. We have 2 and then 2 cosine of n minus 2 theta times the cosine of theta minus the cosine of n minus 3 theta all times cosine of theta. So that's what we get for this first term. And for the second term, we'll have minus 2 cosine of n minus 3 theta times cosine of theta, and then plus the cosine of n minus 4 times theta. So observe that we can put some stuff together here, and we'll see that we have 4 times the cosine of n minus 2 theta times the cosine squared of theta. And then after that, we'll have, let's see, everything will turn into a minus 4 times cosine of n minus 3 theta times the cosine of theta. And then finally, a plus cosine of n minus 4 times theta. Okay, nice. 
And now, well, what we can do is keep applying that over and over again. And let's observe that at the next to last step, it's going to look like one of the following pictures. And this is going to depend on the evenness or the oddness of n. So if n is even, it's going to look like 2 to the n minus 2 times the cosine of 2 theta times the cosine of n minus 2 times theta. And then plus what I'll just call lower terms. And then, like I said, this is if n is even. And then if n is odd, this is going to look like 2 to the n minus 1 times the cosine, the nth power of the cosine of theta plus lower. And like I said, this is what's happening if n is odd. And I should say those lower terms are polynomials in the cosine theta function. In fact, there are polynomials in 2 times the cosine theta function, as we'll see. But notice we can apply maybe a double angle formula to this cosine of 2 theta. And in the end, this is all going to look like 2 to the n minus 1 times the cosine of theta raised to the nth power plus some lower terms, which as we'll you know, write down a little bit more carefully, will be polynomials in the variable 2 times cosine of theta. Okay, so let's maybe jump to that step. Okay, so maybe writing down a little bit more carefully what we were building at on the last board, we had 1 equals cosine of n theta, but then after repeated applications of this formula that we derived, we have that's equal to 2 to the n minus 1 times cosine of n theta plus some number, it doesn't really matter what that is, times 2 to the n minus 2 times cosine to the n minus 1 theta. And then all the way down, we've got some number times cosine theta and then finally a constant term. But now let's observe that from here what we can do is multiply the whole thing by 2 and then also maybe set it all equal to 0. So that's going to end up leaving us 2 times cosine theta all to the nth power. Because if we multiply everything by 2, now the power of cosine matches the power of 2. And then plus a n minus 1 times 2 cosine theta raised to the n minus 1 plus all the way down a1 times 2 cosine theta plus a0 minus the number 2. And like I said, this is all equal to 0. And then I guess I should point out that all of these a's here, so ai is always an integer. I think that's pretty clear based off of the calculation that we hinted at before. But let's notice that that means that 2 times cosine theta is a root of a certain polynomial. And we can, in fact, write that polynomial down. It's x to the n plus a n minus 1 times x to the n minus 1 plus all the way down a 1x plus this a naught minus 2. So it's a root of that polynomial equation. But then also, we know that it's a rational number, or we hope it to be a rational number. So let's observe that if 2 times cosine theta is rational, so let's see, if it is rational, then, well, what happens? Well, that means that 2 times cosine theta is equal to what? Well it's going to be equal to 0 or plus minus a factor of um, a0 minus 2 over, well, the factor of the leading term here, which is 1. That's by the rational root theorem. But notice that just maybe expanding factors of a0 minus 2 to all integers, which is going to overcount. That means 2 times cosine theta is equal to 0, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, and so on and so forth. Oh, but observe that it can't be plus minus 3 or plus minus 4 because 2 times cosine theta is at most 2 and at least negative 2. 
So that means the only possibilities are for two times cosine theta to be equal to zero, plus minus one or plus minus two. But that means that the cosine of theta equals zero plus minus half or plus minus one. So in other words, if we have a rational angle that takes on a rational value, it can only take on the following really five rational values. But in fact, we know exactly where that happens in terms of degrees. That means theta has to be from this list of degrees. So we have zero degrees, 60 degrees. So of course, theta of or cosine of zero is one. Cosine of 60 is a half. Then we could have 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 degrees is zero. We could have 120 degrees. We could have 180 degrees. Cosine of 120 degrees is negative half. Cosine of 180 degrees is negative one, really, and then so on and so forth. So as we see, this real question up here is quite restrictive. We only get a couple of really well-known, commonly seen angles where we achieve this.